Well, a pastor in Texas is training members of his congregation to form a human shield against the enforcement of some American immigration laws. Jim Rigby is the pastor at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Austin, Texas. In May, he was arrested for trespassing while pr protesting a Texas state law that cracks down on sanctuary cities. He's also made his church literally a sanctuary, welcoming illegal immigrants from Guatemala and telling congregants to lock the doors if ICE comes knocking. Pastor Rigby joins us tonight. Pastor, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. So, um, Thank you for inviting me. Because, because uh, you're wearing a clerical collar and you are invoking your religion, the world's largest religion, to throw moral weight behind your argument, I think it's fair to ask what exactly your argument is. Who has a right, a moral right, to come to the United States? Well, we are a sanctuary church. In our church, um, we have two people from Guatemala. Uh, I think particularly, do you remember the... Colin Powell's pottery barn rule. I mean, for me, what gets mm -hmm. left out of the conversation a lot is that this young mother and her son were born into a country that had been destabilized. Um, and as an American, I, you know, I feel like I'm partially responsible for that to give her sanctuary. Hmm. So um, Guatemala had a coup in 1954. It was backed by the United States. I think that's probably what you're referring to. Um, well, that, a few that than ten years series. earlier, a uh, whole series. But we've, I mean, I don't know, Germany and Japan, we in, in effect orchestrated coups in those countries less than ten years before. They don't have sky high murder rates. I, I don't exactly understand. You're saying that Guatemala is a mess because of U.S. involvement. U.S. had much more involvement in Germany and Japan. Those are not a mess. How exactly can you prove that Guatemala's pathologies, which seem to go back a thousand years, are the result of U.S. foreign policy and therefore blood on our hands? Well, I'm just a Presbyterian minister in Austin, Texas, and I had a family come and ask for sanctuary. Our church is a democracy, right. so we all voted on that. And because I knew the story down there, I didn't feel her story started when she got to our boundary. I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not a, a political scientist, but I did not feel like uh, as a Christian, that I could close the door under those terms. Right. Well, I mean, I, I respect that in some ways. I mean, you seem like a compassionate person, and so I admire that in you. But there are bigger implications here because you are violating the law and encouraging others to do the same. And so it raises the obvious question, which I asked you a minute ago, and I'm going to press you on it if you don't mind. Who has a right to come here? people you feel compassion for or what what's the what's the rule that other christians like me should abide by who's got that right that moral right <clears throat> well it's i mean obviously it's a personal a lot of christians are going to disagree with me on this um i would say when people are in harm's way this mother was born as i say in guatemala it was too dangerous for her there so she fled and, and this is not just one person, these are lots of stories, Fl f flees into Mexico, and she's an indigenous person. She's not Mexican. She's, uh, she's um, Mayan. So she stands out like a sore thumb, and the mob starts going after her. So all of a sudden, she's got to choose between throwing herself on the mercy of the United States or possibly having her child kidnapped or killed. So there are millions right. of stories like that. And I, and I realize there are other, I, this is a complicated issue. I understand that. And I'm not trying to vilify somebody who disagrees. I'm just, I was in a crisis of conscience. But it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that. I mean, I understand that. And I'm, I'm actually much more sympathetic to you than I thought I would be because you do seem like you're moved by compassion. But you're also attacking a system that was decided by the United States Congress. The people's representatives voted this into law. And you're saying all of these laws should be ignored. I'm giving the finger to federal agents. We should blow them off. And I just want to know, like, when as a Christian can I do that? When can I decide? Whenever I feel like it? Whenever my conscience is pricked? I mean, is it a, a sort of a buffet-style deal with the law? Like, whenever I, I'm in the mood to abide by it? Like, what are the rules? Well, I think you obey laws whenever you can. But when you feel like a higher law is being uh, a principle, uh, Dr. King saying, when you feel the law is unjust and you can point to people that are being oppressed by it, then... Um, I mean, for me, I just couldn't, um, the law enforcement people from the state, all over the state gathered to argue against us. I do not believe the 
um, purpose of SB4 in Texas, being forced on Austin, was to um, make Americans safer. Because if that's true, I don't think the sheriffs and the police from all over the state would have come and argued against it. They said we're safer by not having SB4. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Police don't get to make the laws in this country. Lawmakers do. And I don't think you'd want to live in a country where police get to make the law, would you? Well, if it's, you know, if it's between the Texas legislature. <laughs> if you agree with it, I guess that's your standard if I agree with it. Okay. Of course, we're out of time. Uh, this is an no, interesting conversation, uh, Pastor. I'm sorry. I'll let you sum it up in one sentence. Well, I, I agree this needs to be something that you don't do lightly, and you, you need to be willing to pay the consequences, and that may be six months in yes. jail. So I don't, I don't, okay. I understand where you're coming from. I just couldn't do it. Good. Well, look, if you're willing to pay the consequences and be a man and look at it right in the face and say, I'll go to jail, then you know what? I'm not going to attack you. Thanks. I appreciate Thank it. You.